In today's video, we're going to be talking about the very first published scientific evidence showing that the mRNA vaccine, Pfizer vaccines, were contaminated with bacterial plasmid DNA and specifically also showing that these plasmids DNA, pl DNA plasmids did indeed have the SV40 enhancement promoter region, which is a viral component, which can be extremely dangerous. So, and this is also peer reviewed evidence. So we finally have it. We'll see how long this might last before perhaps such, such a mm, information that just simply does not look good for the company, how long that might last before it gets retracted. But uh, let's get started with this. My name is Dr. Mikola Rashik of Mara Genomics and the information that the mRNA vaccines, both Moderna and Pfizer were contaminated with DNA came out about a year ago and this has not, never been published really that information came out there was evidence that that was published in a preprint now why did this happen is because when the Pfizer mRNA vaccine was approved for emergency use it was used up it was approved based on a process that used PCR in order to produce the mRNA that was used in the clinical trial that led to that famous 95% uh, efficacy statement, right? But because once the, the vaccines were approved for emergency use, we require tons of this material to literally vaccinate billions of people. And as a consequence, the manufacturer switched to a different process and that process was using bacteria in order bacterial DNA in order to produce the mRNA so basically um, quick background you grow tons and tons of bacteria with a plasmid DNA which is basically circular DNA that you can insert in, pla in, in the bacteria they will replicate it so you get lots of DNA this DNA has an antibiotic resistance gene so that means this is how you can select for bacteria that specifically have the plasmid of interest that you want this is uh, this is basically how you made sure that you only can make sure you add the antibiotic and you only make sure that the bacteria that has the resistance to this antibiotic will survive and that's the one that produces the DNA plasmid of interest that plasmid DNA also had the spike protein which is what we want and it had other other genetic ele elements as well what you do afterwards is you can break down the bacteria, isolate the DNA. You have tons and tons of this DNA and that allows you to then produce using that DNA as a template. You can produce tons of mRNA and this is the mRNA that was subsequently, um, I will say it, placed into lipid nanoparticles, which is basically like a bubble made out of lipids, which are like fatty molecules. There's four types of lipids that were used and that's what was used to inject people to deliver the genetic content as a vac as a form of vaccine. The authors of this paper don't call it vaccine. They they, they call it um, I think they call it biologicals or injectables. They refuse to call it vaccine. Like many people, uh, many people in the audience who watch this content also refuse to call it vaccine. And basically, when the when the mRNA vaccines were made, it seems that both the mRNA content for the spike protein as well as the plasmid DNA was packaged in those lipid nanoparticles. Now those are the rumors that came out. What the authors here wanted to, to do is to confirm this because they reminded us there has been one publication prior to this one that did indeed show that uh, there, there was DNA contamination in mRNA vaccines. They quantified it, but they didn't specifically say what kind of DNA. These guys wanted to go one step further to see whether this is true, whether confirm other observations, whether this is indeed that bacterial plasmid. And more importantly, because this is the rumors that came out, that this bacterial plasmid had this viral component SV40, which the, these authors say is extremely dangerous if that's the case. So what they did, what did they do is they used four vials of four different vaccines. These vaccines were all expired. They were either monovalent, meaning they were only targeting the original Wuhan strain of, of, uh, 
virus, that's the strain that started the pandemic, and they also use some bivalent vaccines, which basically meaning that, that these uh, vaccines had two different types of mRNAs inside. One was coding for the Wuhan strain, the one that, again that started the pandemic, as well as one that was either I believe it was XBB 1.5 or BA4 or 5. So these were the bivalent ones. And even though they were expired, they were never opened and they were stored properly. So they, what they did is they wanted to see whether these vaccines work. And they took this specific th uh, cell line and they, ex they exposed the, the cell line to these vaccines. Basically, what it means is that the cell the cells took up the vaccine. That's called transfection. Okay. So when the vaccine enters your cells of interest that's called transfection so yes they were able to show that these cells were indeed successfully transfected and they saw something so obviously number one they were able to show that these cells were producing spike protein and they were able to verify that spike protein on the surface boom number one number two they were able to show that the spike protein was also it was could be found outside the cells so the cells excreted the spike protein and they excreted the spike protein into the outside environment via exosomes. Now this has been previously observed in, in, in vaccinated individuals. What does that mean? Exosomes are these tiny little pieces of cell, if you will, and they are used by cells to communicate with, with one another. We did do a video on that very first finding as well, plus I did a very large series of videos when I were in, was investigating any scientific information that could corroborate whether shedding was possible or not so check out that series as well and again we talked about lots about exosomes in 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 uh, those videos and basically what it means is that once you're vaccinated basically exosomes could exit the from the cells into the circulation and then that means is that spike protein in the exosomes could be spreading throughout the entire body the authors do mention though that we have never yet had any scientific studies to determine whether spike protein that is carried out via exosomes throughout the body and entering additional other cells whether that could be toxic why do they say that is because what they also found is that injection of these mRNA vaccines or sorry this transfection entry of these mRNA vaccines into the, their specific cells also was somewhat toxic basically there was pathological changes that were observed inside those cells and they mentioned you know what this is actually perhaps not trivial and the reason why is because they used these specific type of cells that was embryonic kidney cells that were made to be immortal so that means such cells, these cells are not wimpy cells, they're, they're tough and resistant to toxic insults and nevertheless they were being impacted by the vac this Pfizer vaccine. So the authors mentioned, you know what, we should probably be testing how toxic these vaccines could be to the actual normal human cell lines and these type of toxicology studies have is not available. All right, but it's the next part that we want to talk about, which is basically they wanted to see what is the genetic content of these vaccines and they wanted to see is there besides the expected RNA what else is there so they measured the RNA and they mentioned look based on the amount of RNA that was found inside these vaccines they were seeing the the amount of RNA that you would expect this was basically the amount that, that the manufacturers were mentioning it was 30 micrograms of it so in all of these lots that you they were saying about 30 micrograms so, okay that's as expected they they also wanted to see the dna so what of course they also when they took these vaccines remember these vaccines or basically these biological so these uh, injectables basically they're remember these are lipid nanoparticles so these little bubbles of fat housing genetic material they first expose them to the like a detergent in order to break the break that all up in order to release the genetic content and then 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 they allow this allow them to measure to see what kind of genetic content they have in, in, in there so they did that and they used three different techniques three different techniques to measure amount of DNA the techniques what they are is actually irrelevant they all rely on the same kind of my understanding is they rely on the same methodology which is basically you use specific dyes that can intercalate in between the chemical bases of DNA so and then that allows you to measure how much DNA you have so they did do, do that they saw lots of DNA 
lots of DNA. But they were curious, well, are we just measuring DNA or are we also measuring RNA with that? And despite the fact that the manufacturers, those who make those kits to measure the DNA, they claim, no, 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 this is only for DNA measurement, but they wanted to make sure. So what did they do is they use these specific enzymes to destroy the RNA so that only DNA would be intact. So they did do that. They destroyed the D RNA and they remeasured the DNA content and it dropped a lot. So <laughs> they're saying, look, despite the fact that these, the, the manufacturers of the assays for measuring DNA claim, yeah, yeah, you only get to measure DNA. That's not true. We're, we're also measuring RNA and DNA. So if you really want to find out how much DNA is being found in mRNA vaccines, how much was it contaminating, you should destroy the RNA first. And basically, again, they were using three different techniques. One of them was better, the best for accurately measuring the DNA than the other. And, and basically what they found, found out is that there's approximately um, four to five fold more DNA in those mRNA vaccines than is the minimal amount that is considered to be safe in clinical injectables, okay? So despite the fact that the that means basically that's a lot of contamination going on there. Okay. Now, what when we're talking about the considered safe amount of DNA on clinical injectables that uh, that you can inject into a human being for medical purposes. Now, we talk when we mention this, we're talking about free DNA, meaning DNA that is just simply free floating in a solution. Now, why is that the, that that safe amount is considered to be 10 nanograms? So if the, so that basically means such free DNA will not be able to enter your cells. Number one and number two, such DNA can is liable to be easily destroyed. So here what, what, what we have instead is four to five times more of that than that. So 40 to 50 nanograms of contaminating DNA inside these mRNA vaccines, but they're not free. They're not free floating they are actually packaged inside those lipid nanoparticles. What does that mean? It means that now these lipid nanoparticles, these vaccines could bring that contaminating DNA right inside the cell. And that's where it can get really dangerous, right? Because at that point you have fragments of DNA that could potentially code for who knows what in this case it could code for spike protein and this is one of the theories they mentioned there's potential theories as to why are we seeing spike protein for so long in people and that's one of the theories is that perhaps it's that contaminating dna that allows <laughs> that allows let's see what's going on here that's what's going on <laughs> and, and um and that could potentially result in that longer than expected spike production, which has been seen in mRNA vaccinated people, despite the fact that originally, of course, when they, these vaccines came out, we were all promised that basically they, they would be degraded very quick and the spike protein production would not last very long. So that was one of the theories. Another theory that they also mentioned is the fact that, of course, the mRNA of the, gen the genetic material inside these vaccines is mo uses modified chemical bases as opposed to the ones that are typically found in nature. So we did a video um, video on that topic. And another one is that perhaps the the mRNA of the vaccines could be converted back into DNA naturally by certain mechanisms found in our body called line one as well and we did also video on that so check that out but anyway the take home message here is that they were they basically they are finding dna so and they showed this figure basically where you where you see where you see how much dna they're observing okay so but what they wanted they wanted to also determine is that dna injected into the cells that they were exposing to the vaccines and the answer was yes and the way they did that is they basically took out the DNA from the cells and they specifically targeted 
in multiple areas that would recognize those specific regions of that plasmid plasmid that is it was used by the manufacturer in this case Pfizer to produce mRNA and whichever region they were targeting so they looked at the spike protein they look at the antibiotic resistant gene they and they look at other areas including that SV40 viral enhancer promoter and they were always finding it inside these transfected cells with the mRNA Pfizer um, vaccines okay so basically what what it means is that this plasmid contaminating plasmid DNA indeed is getting inside the cells and what they're saying this means is that whoever took the mRNA vaccine there's uh, and if that vaccine was indeed contaminated by the plasmid DNA most likely such plasmid DNA would also be entering inside our human cells post vaccination why why is that really bad well because it's already been known in the past that these SV40 viral promoters are dangerous and the reason why is because their presence as it was found in the Pfizer mRNA vaccine would allow such plasmid if present inside a human cell to potentially enter nucleus and once inside the nucleus then it runs the risk of being able to integrate into the human genome so basically such a vaccine could then run the risk of also acting as an unwanted gene therapy so much so that they else they even mention and this is the first time i've ever seen anyone use that terminology these authors claim that pfizer and BioNTech, who are the producers of the of this vaccine mrna vaccine should be held accountable for exposing humanity to something so dangerous as allowing mrna shots that had DNA con plasmid contamination that had that SV40 promoter because it basically means that the, some individuals could run the risk then to potentially be producing spike protein for a long term or permanent purpose if such a genetic component were to integrate into the human human genome and they also reminded us is that when Pfizer released this information to the regulatory bodies they never ever informed them that this SV40 enhancer and promoter that is so dangerous was actually present as part of the plasmid sequence and they said there's no reason why the, that it should have ever been included all you had to do is use a basic bacterial plasmid that would allow the bacteria to produce lots of DNAs that you could then use as a template to produce mRNA which is what Moderna did there was no reason to have to have that in fact they were asking they were asking rhetorically in this paper what was the purpose of Pfizer what was their intention to have that included when it's that dangerous so they're mentioning this is definitely definitely very bad news this is the first confirmation that we see that indeed the, this is true this is published science and they and of course the authors once again now this is numerous authors that I that I've mentioned who called for the fact that use of these mRNA vaccines should be completely suspended until we understand how safe or dangerous they could be and the format that they were used uh, and thus far. All right, I'm gonna wrap it up right here and I look forward to seeing you in the next installment. And uh, as always, uh, please leave a comment below. Um, please uh, share the video as well. And, uh, and I'll see you in, in the next in scientific, uh, scientific note installment. Bye everyone.